presumably in, in those days, uh, again before the sort mm. of you know, the, the era era that people tend to think of as the sixties, mm. which mm. encouraged the encouraged the growth of the hippies and so mm. on, the, the kind of people being attracted to Buddhism were perhaps different to those who were attracted, say, five years later. You know, perhaps you you were finding a more English middle class audience for for what you had to offer. Mm. I remember that when I was in uh, India, when I was in Kaning Pong, and I was told about the establishment of the Hampstead Buddhist Vihara, mm. which was in fact established not very long before my own return in 1964, yeah. I rather wondered why it had been established in Hampstead. Huh. And I was told uh, in correspondence that it had been established in Hampstead because Hampstead was where all the intellectuals lived. Mm -hmm. And it was assumed that uh, the intellectuals of Hampstead, just because they were intellectuals, would come flocking to right. a Buddhist vihara. Sure. Um, yeah. But I, f I found myself that this was not the case. Huh. I don't think during the two years that I was there, more than one or two uh, Hampstead intellectuals found their, their uh, obey to the Vihara mm. and I came to the conclusion that this uh, was altogether a wrong approach that mm. uh, left-wing intellectuals were not the most likely material uh, for, for a, a Buddhist uh, movement mm. but that was the feeling at the time it would seem mm. amongst uh, some people at least who were engaged in, in Buddhist work mm. in so, those days. So did you have an idea at that point of who those people were, who were the people that you should make your appeal to? Because that no, must have I, had some I, I bearing. didn't. No, because when I, I, in India, I, I uh, came in contact with all sorts of people. Yes. I was invited to address all sorts of audiences, mm. so, I mean, usually non-Buddhist. Mm. It was only after uh, Dr. Ambedkar's mass c uh, conversion movement that I had an appreciable, nominally Buddhist audience to address mm -hmm. in India. Right. Otherwise, I spoke to Parsis and Jains mm. and Hindus, of course, and Sikhs and Baha'is. <laughs> so I was accustomed to communicating the Dharma to whatever audience mm. I happened to be presented with. Mm. So I had no sort of preconceived ideas as to what sort of people I wanted mm. to, to communicate to. I was quite happy to communicate as best I could, yeah. communicate the Dharma to, to whoever happens to come along. Right. Uh, sometime after the establishment of the FWBO, mm. Mr. Christmas Humphreys said, either in a radio or TV program, that um, Buddhism in Britain was an upper middle class movement, and I severely questioned <laughs> that. I think he would have liked it to have been an upper middle class movement, but mm. it certainly wasn't even in, in those days. Yeah. And the people coming along to the Hampstead Buddhist Vihara during the two years that I was there, and the people coming along to the Buddhist society were quite a mixed bunch. Mm -hmm. We did have quite a few elderly ladies. Mm -hmm. We had a few uh, semi-hippie mm -hmm. young people coming mm -hmm. along. We had quite a lot of ordinary people, mm -hmm. people working in offices and mm -hmm. banks, mm -hmm. a few teachers, mm -hmm. and, and so on. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I think um, that the idea that uh, Vihari and Hampstead would attract Hampstead mm. intellectuals was quite disproved. Sure. Sure. One just got a cross-section oh. of people from well, all over London and mm. perhaps the home counties. Mm. The Buddhist society membership was perhaps more definitely and exclusively middle class, mm. but by no means entirely so. Mm.